Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel! A couple of weeks ago I made a Marie Antoinette doll and you know it seems many of you really love this doll as well as an idea of making historically accurate dolls. And you know for me and also for my mom who has made a dress for the Marie Antoinette doll it was also a very interesting experience because it's quite different from making you know just dolls based on your own concepts or making celebrity dolls because in this case you really have to dive a little bit deeper make real research about the outfits, hairstyles, makeup, shoes and all this stuff so you're not just making a doll but you're really learning something new and that's why we've decided to continue this project we decided to continue the collection of historically accurate dolls and that's why today we are going to make a Queen Elizabeth doll the Queen Elizabeth the first one not the one who is Queen of the UK right now but the one that lived in the 16th century so it's going to be very interesting I think, I'm really quite excited about this project, so let's start. Uh, my mom is going to make an outfit again today, really, she's helping me extremely a lot with these big projects and I'm going to make the rest of my work. So let's start working and you please don't forget to subscribe to my channel of course, hit the bell button, hit the like button if you like these kind of makeovers on this channel and yeah, I'm going to start working, let's have fun! So this is our model for today and I really love her face because I also think she looks quite royal and she will become a perfect queen. So first of all let's remove her outfit and then I'll cut her hair very very short. I use like always hot air of my hair dryer to make the head soft and to melt the glue inside of it and then after a couple of minutes of using the hair dryer I can easily disconnect the head from the body and then I remove the rest of the short hair from the inside of the head using my tweezers. And when the hair is gone I can take pure acetone and remove her original makeup. Queen Elizabeth had ginger hair, so I think I will use this pretty Morocco Saran blend for her. But first of all, I'm going to cover the head with a couple of layers of red brown acrylics. And then I can take my rerouting tool and I place strands of new hair into the holes. My old wooden rerouting tool got broken after two years of active use, by the way, so I've made one myself out of an exacto knife. And this is her new hair after about 4 hours of work, looks good and now let's add tacky glue inside of the head and I will let it dry completely for sure for 24 hours. And 
while the glue is drying, I can also prepare the body for the makeover. I'm going to sand it nicely with nail buffers to remove the gloss from the surface. And like this, paint will go better on and it will also stay on the sanded plastic longer. Then I clean it with rubbing alcohol and after this I can spray the head and the body with a couple of layers of light nude acrylics. After this I spray them with a couple of layers of Mr. Super Clear sealant to make the surface matte and then I can start drawing the face starting like always with sketching her eyes and eyebrows. Queen Elizabeth had very round eyebrow shape and her eyebrows were also quite thin, so let's draw it on my doll as well. And we are going for a very natural makeup. Queen Elizabeth had a very light complexion and she also used all these toxic white face powders and pink blush, the same like in Marie Antoinette times, but she used smaller amount of it. Pink cheeks were not that much exaggerated, you know, like in Marie Antoinette makeup. So I'm using just very natural warm tone pastels and also white pastels to create a very gentle and very light skin tone of a woman with red hair. On portraits you can see that she had brown eyes, so let's make them brown on my doll as well. And of course we will not be able to make this doll an exact copy of a real person, but I would like to recreate the main and the most recognizable features at least. And when the face is ready, I can take her body and I blush it with the same soft pastels like we've just used on her face.
Okay, now the face and the body look pretty much the same color, so we can move on. And I want to style her hair first before I will start working on the outfit, shoes, accessories and all these other things. And first of all I want to curl her hair and we need a lot of quite tight curls today. I'm showing you now a couple of pictures to give you an idea of the hairstyle we are going for today. Queen Elizabeth had curly hair, mostly styled into some kind of two balls on the sides, parted in the middle. So after I curl all her hair, I am going to make hair pins shorter and I will style her hair similar to what we've seen on the pictures. And I'm going to fix the hair with the pins. I think they call it French pins in the States, well here 50 kilometers away from France, these are just hair pins, the regular ones, the normal ones, the ones that everyone uses. So this is what I've made, it looks really good I think, so now let's attach the false lashes, add glossy varnish to her eyes and lips and then we will move on to the next chapter of this makeover. My mom is helping me with the dress this week and now you can see her work in progress video. And by the way, she has bought a new super professional sewing machine to be able to bring her creations to a new level. And now you can see her using it for making an embroidery on the future dress. The sleeves in the 16th century were quite puffy around the shoulders, so you can see now how my mom made them.
after sewing the top and the skirt together my mom starts making an underskirt and this time it's gonna be a little bit different shape than she has made for Marie Antoinette because in Marie Antoinette times a big skirt started right from the waistline and in the 16th century the big bump was placed a little bit lower you can see that the dresses had quite a long pointy top it goes lower than the waistline and just then starts the skirt, the big skirt. That's why the construction of the underskirt today is a little bit different than the one you've seen in the Marie Antoinette makeover. Then my mom is making a ruffle to place it around her neck and it was really a trendy thing back in the days in the 16th century. And I wonder guys, by the way, when these ruffles will become popular again, I kinda miss them. <laughs> And then in the end my mom is still making a hand fan for my doll. So, and here is the outfit completely finished. You can see here the dress and the underskirt. It all looks absolutely gorgeous. And here is also our adorable hand fan. Perfect, everything looks very good. So now I'm going to make a pair of shoes out of Warbler Thermoplastic for my doll to complete this royal look. And I want to make something similar to the shoes you can see now in the picture, but in different colors. These are the shoes from the same period, from the 16th century, so I think they would fit the look of our queen.
I paint the shoes with brown acrylics and then I will freehand all kinds of leaves and flowers to create a pattern like on those white and blue shoes. And I think I will also add a couple of rhinestones to complete the design. So here are the finished shoes, look very royal I think. So now I still want to decorate her hair with pearls because Queen Elizabeth quite often used pearls in her hair and I think it would be a good finishing touch to her hair do. And after this I will put everything together and then we will take a look at the end result pictures. So guys, here is my gorgeous Queen Elizabeth and this time you can see that this is some serious leader of the nation. My Marie Antoinette doll was very beautiful and very sad. And Queen Elizabeth looks like a lady with a strong character and this is good actually because this is how I've planned it. I personally feel very proud about her hairstyle and also my mom's new sewing machine has done a fantastic job today. Let's see what will be her new creations made with this machine. It has a lot of different programs like with embroidery and some other special features. So I'm really looking forward to see more of her experiments. And my work has been finished for today and now I would love to hear your opinion. What do you think about this makeover and who should become the next doll in our historical collection and this doll is now available for sale on ebay for three days so you can check it if you are interested the link you'll find in the description box under this video so guys that was my doll transformation of the week i really hope you enjoyed it today and if so please don't forget to support my art here on youtube with your likes of course subscribe to my channel hit the bell button and i will see you very soon in my new doll repaint video but actually the next video will be not the doll repaint video one but the results of my collaboration with you it's going to be the showcase video presenting all the drawings all the ideas that you have sent for our collaboration so see you very soon next week maybe even in a couple of days i don't know exactly yet when i'm going to upload this video i've promised you to upload it by the end of june so normally tuesday is my deadline i'm going to try to make it by tuesday maybe later maybe friday but anyway the next week you're going to get the results of this collaboration we will know the names of the winners so see you soon guys love you have a nice weekend bye <laughs>